Hey, your pops here. Sunday afternoon, about 2.30. Sitting out here on the front porch. In my rocking chair. Enjoying me a pint. It's just a little bit in between lunch and dinner. We was planning on uh, having a cookout, but I don't know. Looks like it might rain. Found me a niche in between slats on this porch where the rocker wants to stop. Almost comfortable. I want something I want to share with you. You might have seen it on the last video. I took an old McBaron's tin. And I glued a, uh, a bullet rye cork in the center of it. Can you see that? I'm sure you can. And the lid fits right down on it. Put a little artwork on the top of it, a little abstract thing going there. Took a little heat gun and heated it and it peeled right off. The bottom on the bottom sticker peeled off too. But it's good for tapping your pipe out. You can see the ashes in it where I've used it umpteen times since since I did it. But uh, I made a couple of them. I give Briar Duke one of them. The handy is a shirt pocket. I got one of them in my backpack and towed it with me and just you know whenever you're out don't want to throw your ashes down somewhere just put them in this and seal it back up and drop it in your backpack or and then bring it home with you dump it in the ash can throw it back in your backpack and you got a little handy dandy to go ash tray that you can take just about anywhere you want to go just thought it was a decent little idea and just so as you'll know I call it the tuba can named it after uh, my old pal old bird so uh, y'all wanna grab the idea and go with it Y'all be my guest. I'm sure somebody out there has done it before I did. But anyway, today I'm a chooching on my my 7 Ghibli 644 KS. And I'm swinging back a a nice little uh, portion of some uh, haunted bookshop, Cornell and Deal's haunted bookshop. It was uh, 2017 when I put it in the can or in the jar. And it's been jarred up since uh, October of last year. It's been open once since then. <clears throat> it's been a pretty interesting morning. Listen y'all. Don't ever hypothetically ask yourself, could things get any worse? Don't ever do that. Count your blessings. Well, count them all you can, because sooner or later relatives will, uh, will outnumber them. But don't ever ask yourself if uh, things could get any worse, because the answer is always yes resoundingly.
you ultimately have two choices in life. You can live alone and single and lonely. Or you can get married and let someone else make you wish you was dead. And there's really no general consensus about it. There's really not. Because, you know, a general consensus is just everyone else agreeing to say collectively what no one really wants to say individually. Kind of like a nurse giving an old man Viagra in a nursing home. You know, she's really only doing it to keep him from rolling out of bed. After all, most men are like public toilets anyway. The good ones are taken and the rest of them are full of shit. But anyway, my dad always taught me that, or at least he tried to teach me that laughter was the best medicine. You know, which would explain why so many of my uncles died of tuberculosis. But anyway, My girls today, Minnie Me and uh, Jilly Darling, asked me to take them to Walmart. I, I would say it seems as though, but it don't seem as though. It just happens to be that way. I knew that Jilly Darling's birthday was in July, and turns out that Gracie's is too, and they're both within a week of each other. It ain't like they snuck up on me or anything, but. They snuck up on me. I mean, it's it's easy for Gracie. All she's got to do is go buy her mom a box of macaroni and a can of spray paint. Do a little glue and same thing every year, you know. But for me, it's a little more difficult. So, here I am walking around Walmart, frantically, while they're doing their thing, doing their shopping. I guess maybe Gracie's keeping Jill busy for me, maybe what her excuse was. But she knows I'm trying to shop for both of them. And I'm thinking to myself, while I'm watching all these other shoppers shop calmly that there is an asteroid out there 12,000 light years away with a 0.6% chance of striking the earth And everyone else is walking around calmly. Everything, like everything's fine. Everything's fine. I got two birthdays to shop for. For the only two women that still live in my life, or live in my life, live in my house. I still got two other daughters. One of them lives in Virginia. The other one still lives in Tennessee, but like a hundred miles away. Now my wife gets a little queasy at the sight of her own blood. But she could still paint a barn with mine.
and these people are walking around like everything's cool. So Dilly and Gracie are shopping, and I take advantage of the situation and find me a little sales clerk on the floor. And yep, that's right. Old Pop's loner that he is. I ask for help. I even said please. Well, the lady made the suggestion that I calm down. To which I made the, the suggestion that she just didn't completely understand the severity of the situation. She asked me, she said, well, what are they like? I, I, I told her, I said, there is so much to tell. She said, well, does your wife like books? I told her, she likes my checkbook. Well, she said, well, how about your daughter? What's she like? I said, well, she's the kind of person that if she sees you standing on the corner waiting for a bus, she's the kind of person that might walk up to you and staple a missing dog flyer to your chest. She frowned. She reached down, she shook my hand, and she said, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can only suggest a, maybe a, a, a dinner and a movie. About that time I looked up and there stands Jilly and Gracie going through the line with their purchases. And I just left my buggy sitting there and I thanked her for her time. I wished her a good day and I told her, I said, quickly, I must hurry. For there goes my people, and I am their leader, and every 60 seconds on our planet, a minute passes. And I turned around and walked off. I'm old Pops.